What is up guys, Coop here with another video about Divinity Original Sin, Definitive Edition actually. So, with uh, Divinity Original Sin, I always say one of the hardest parts of the game is starting off a character. Uh, it's honestly really hard because you don't have much life, you don't have much spells, and when building all your different builds, it's tough to actually build them because you are so limited in the amount of spells. So today we're going to be jumping into the top 5 starting builds that I recommend when jumping in to the game as the Red Prince. I hope you guys do enjoy. Be sure to check out my Patreon down below as it will help support the channel as well. Anyways, without further ado, let's dive in. So the first build we're going to talk about actually is already a preset in the game, but it is such a good build regardless, and that is the Wizard build. Basically, the thing with the wizard to exclusively look at is the fire. You can do a lot of fire damage. You actually have three different fire spells you can use while doing this build. Also on top of it, one of the things is also your uh, demonic stare here allows you to be able to drain the magical armor from the target and put it onto yourself. And that is really helpful in a variety of different ways because it can really help out with making yourself a solid mage character. And also, one of the things with fire is, well, it keeps burning and causing all these different fire effects can also potentially hurt your character as well so it's important that you're able to keep up that magical armor but it's nice to have a you know one AP ability and another one AP ability and you know a few other different fire sort of spells out there to really give yourself a lot of depth and a lot of other unique things to do so that way you're always constantly doing damage but it only costs a certain amount of AP to actually be doing that and AP is action points for you guys who do not know also, you have Fossil Strike to allow you to spread out your fire, and which is also really awesome ability as well. And one of the things that's really nice is you can really do like a good rotation of doing Searing Daggers and Fossil Strike, and then the next turn do Dragon Blaze, and doing a Wand Attack, and then doing another Ignition for another fire attack. So, really gets into like you always being able to spread fire or doing fire damage, so that way you're not completely wasting a whole entire turn of just sitting there and kind of wondering what to do. Now with this build I highly recommend having light armor as the light cloth armor will allow you to have high magical sort of resistance. Uh, one of the things too that you can do is you do a wand in one hand and then you do a shield in the other as the shield will also give you some more magical armor and give you physical armor so that way you don't just like walk into a fight and then one swoop like they can break your physical armor and then stun you. So it's important that you also keep a little bit of that sort of you know protection going on. Now talking about protection, uh, I think it's important to recommend that also the lizard background does have the sophisticated trait. The sophisticated trait is awesome because it does allow you to have a 10% fire resistance and 10% poison resistance. So giving you a little bit of that resistance to fire. Now the talent I also recommend is demon, as demon also gives you a 15% resistance to fire. However, do keep in mind that does give you a 15% uh, penalty to water. Now, also in addition, it does raise your uh, fire resistance by 10. But I think that's important because the thing is, you're going to be having 25% less fire damage. But you're at a very low level. So at a low level, you are going to be taking a lot of damage. Um, and one of the things is you don't want to stand in the fire too long and then stand in the fire for a tiny bit and then die. That's not what you want to happen. So to make yourself a little bit stronger and to stand in the fire while also being able to survive in it, it's important that you have these traits. Now obviously the water resistance is going to make things a little rough. I'm not going to lie to you, it does get rough when there is a hydro sort of mage out there. However, with this build, it does help out in a lot of different fights. Now it is important to keep in mind though that you do have maybe a wand that's different from fire. As one of the things that's going to come into play sometimes is you might face off against a fire slug or a oil thing that turn or fire like bubbles and things. There's a lot of instances where sometimes fire is completely resistant um, sort of scenarios. So it's important that you also get a little bit of depth and not have things like fossil strike and everything. So that's one of the reasons that I also recommend with Geo, you start getting a little bit of those poison skills out there. And that's also where Sophisticated also comes into play because, well, you know, you might have a fight where they're completely resistant to sort of, you know, fire damage. You can use your poison damage and still be able to survive your poison damage puddles that you put on the ground as well. So 
it allows you to get you a lot of different combos here and there that can really make this character really fun, especially going forward. So that is the first recommended build. Next is the Cleric build. The reason I like the Cleric build is one, the resistances is really, really nice. Two, having able to sort of bring back yourself some magical armor with your source base ability is also really nice. Also, one of the things that's really cool is having that ability to do fire damage as a lot of your stuff in your sort of cleric toolkit is your really support character. So if your magical damage is going to do a lot more effective on say a melee based target, it's nice to be able to help your uh, mage based character sit, do that freeze or that stun that is really needed when destroying their magical armor. So having these different abilities is pretty nice. Now one of the things I did include is Armor of Frost to make yourself really fit into that support role. Obviously if you're shield and you're sophisticated, you're going to be able to resist a, a few different damage types as well and also be able to get some magical armor if need be with your source base ability. But on the off chance that you do fall below life or one of your sneaky rogues wasn't too sneaky and ends up getting themselves really hurt, you do have Restoration to help you out. Also works against those pesty undead, giving you a, yet another thing in the toolkit. Also after that you have Decaying Touch, so say like your mage does destroy, or not your mage, but your physical uh, attacker, say like your melee warrior goes over and breaks their physical armor, you can actually still be helpful in a fight without having to focus too much on the magical front and using Decaying Touch to decay them and then use your healing spells against them. Or have the hunter use his first aid ability in addition to your restoration to do some massive damage of healing because of the decaying perk that happens due to decaying touch making the heals hurt. Now in addition to that I chose the talent of living armor as the extra heals that you receive from healing yourself or your, maybe your party heals you or you're from your potions will allow you to have that magical armor up consistently when jumping into the fight. And it also makes it important that you are really a anti-mage because with your resistances to the fire and everything with having an ability to get ma magical armor not only from your racial but also from your armor of frost you also have living armor to help you out with that making yourself a really good supporting character to help out your party highly recommend this build for anybody who's doing a giant group party setting next is actually yet another preset i try to avoid as many presets when doing this build but this build already kind of comes with its own stuff but one of the things is we do change the talent for this. This is the fighter class. Now one of the things that you got to keep in mind is obviously you do have your resistances to fire and poison. In addition to that, having that heavier armor makes it really awesome. Now have a fight where, for example, that you need to destroy some of the magical armor. You do still have a spell that does help out with that. But it doesn't really matter too much as it does allow you to have another thing in the toolkit just in case if you need your mage to get a real quick way of getting rid of that magical armor or maybe the magical armor is already broken and you want to do some health damage to them while they walk up to you before you destroy their physical armor the fire i always say is one of the best ways to do it because they have to run to you and slowly destroy their magical armor and if it's already destroyed by your other party members as they run down to you they already have lesser life allowing you to be able to do a lot more things once you destroy their physical armor though dragon blades and the other ability are not too important Demonic Stare is actually a little important though because it does allow you to have access to in a way of getting magical armor as a tank. Uh, so that's one of the things I really do enjoy with this. Having that resistance and having a way of also getting magical armor allows you to deal with some of the magical spells that will be thrown against you. Obviously 10% and a little bit of magical armor doesn't seem like much but it does help out in just those little situations where it counts. Now obviously we chose Battle Stomp because it adds obviously a area of effect stun, so that's really awesome. So if you destroy their physical armor of multiple targets, you can slam on the ground and then stun all those different targets, making it really awesome ability. It's way better than the charge, while the charge does a good amount of damage right at the beginning and allows you to be jump into the fray, this one actually allows you to hit multiple targets, and if multiple targets are already low on armor, you can break it and knock them down, allowing your team members some time to maneuver. Now say you need a spell to get rid of that armor, you do have Bouncing Shield, which can hit up to a additional enemy within a 5 meter range. So you got a bunch of targets that are really close, you can hit your shield, knock at two of them, destroy their physical armor, do a battle slam on the ground, knock them down, make some plays. So really good combo altogether here. 
and that's one of the things I like. Now obviously you need to add a little bit of physical armor because obviously you have a little bit of things to do with your magical and you have a little bit of resistances to deal with the magical stuff even though it might, uh, might not be too great, but it does allow you to have some extra protection there. Now as for talents, there's a few different ones you can do here. Living armor is a good one. If you're getting extra healing, you can add another way of getting some magical armor. Uh, another one is opportunist, obviously. Hot-headed is also really good as it allows you a chance to add more crit to your stuff because you will most of the time be at full life. Uh, Comeback Kid is another nice one because it gets you out of turn rotation, though I don't recommend it right at the beginning. However, uh, if I actually had to pick, Pitcher of Life is also a really good one as well because it allows you, as you as time goes on, you will have more and more points into Warfare because Warfare is the main thing you're going to be actually getting into. But if I had to choose right in the beginning, I would definitely say that uh, maybe uh, Living Armor or Opportunist is a good one because it allows you to be able to kind of work things out and constantly do some good amount of damage being a damage dealing tank unlike the Cleric. So another one is the good old Knight class. Now this is a preset, but trust me, I did change one of the things. It had a thing in two hand, actually changed that to Necromancy because you want survival. And one of the things is with necromancy that's really awesome is every point you put into it adds it to where your damage is, you know, healing. So that's what really nice about that is 10% healing is a lot of good healing, especially when you're at your lower levels, as you really want some survivability in those hairy situations, and maybe you don't have a healer. Now one of the things I do recommend also is getting rid of that point in constitution, just putting it into pure strength, as your damage will heal you. Now, the things that I chose here is Battering Ram and Battle Stomp and Crippling Blow. As the Bouncing Shield, obviously you can't really use it because this is going to be mainly a two-handed build. Now, the thing that's really nice is Battering Ram allows you to get into the fray, but also if the armor is already destroyed, you can use it to knock down that specific target. And then in addition to that, you have another way of doing multiple damage to multiple different creatures, and if their armor is destroyed, you can also do a multi-stun. And then on top of that, you have Crippling Blow, say like uh, you have a bunch of mages behind you, they're really low on life, and you don't want that target to run at them and attack them, you can use Crippling Blow to cripple that target. However, you guys gotta keep in mind that it is resisted to physical armor, so make sure that like the physical armor is gone before you rely on that slow, otherwise it might not happen. But regardless, it is a really good way of destroying some physical armor besides your ma basic melee attacks. Now from here, you're going to be doing a balance of using Necromancy and Warfare. Warfare is going to be one of your main skills, followed by Necromancy. Don't fully devote to Necromancy though. Do put a few points in there and then go right to Two Hand, as Two Hand, the crit multiplier will be very important. Um, in the beginning, I highly recommend obviously choosing all strength. However, eventually later on, just put one point here and then one point into Wits. One point into Strength, one point into Wits. Basically, what you want to do is you want to increase your crit. Your crit is very important, especially going forward, and you're going to want you to do some massive deeps because when you'll do your crit multiplier, it'll be increased by your actual two-hand skill that you'll be putting in points into as you level up. So right after you do you know, Warfare and Necromancy, I highly recommend at least putting one point into two-hander, and then from there, just kind of going through the motions of putting all your points where they need to be. Now as for talents, there's a good amount of talents out there, but I think Opportunist really shines right at the beginning. As anybody that runs by, you can do a quick hit and give you a little bit of that precious life that you really don't have in the beginning stages. However, later on, I highly recommend obviously getting Picture of Health, because most of your points will be devoted to Warfare and not so much Necromancy. Once you get to like kind of a sweet spot, like you'll put like four points into Necromancy and then a bunch into Warfare and a little bit into Two Hand, it'll be important that you make sure that you have a good amount of life so you don't overheal. You don't want to overheal too much. Otherwise, if you're overhealing too much, you need to get more life. You can either put points in constitution, but that de that decreases your damage. So make sure you put a little bit of picture of life or picture of health because it will allow you to get a little bit of that, that more precious healing. However, opportunist, like I said, is one of the highly recommended parts for this build. Yeah, you guys actually get to see a sneak peek of one of the builds I've been working on, but I call this the warmongering build. Basically, you put a point into Scoundrel and you put a good point into Warfare and it makes a really powerful build. Now this is, build is another two-handed build similar to the previous one, but this one is all about making sure you make the play and making sure you devote your time to the kill. 
With the spells that we choose, we choose Adrenaline. Adrenaline is one of the key things that is picked here. It's one of the most powerful spells, I say, in the game, as it allows you to get those two extra action points and to really maximize whatever play you're about to commit to. Now, the thing that you're going to have to do right after that is to do a lot of your basic attacks. So right after you put a point into Scoundrel, I highly recommend putting a point into Warfare. Now, this one actually does require you to put some points into Wits. I always say put one into Strength, one into Wits. And then, from there, basically what you're doing is you're doing a 2 to 1 ratio. You always want about 2 Strength to your 1 Wits. Then once you get to your Soft Cap of 40, you go right back to your Wits again. Now, the thing about this build is it's all about making those giant players. So, you're attacking, you're using your two-handed weapon, and you're multiply trying to destroy their armor. Once you destroy their armor, you do Battle Stomp to hit all those different targets. You also use Crippling Blow to help you destroy that armor a little bit faster. And if you can't commit to the kill fully and not be able to do it, you do Adrenaline to give you those action points to make you get that kill. Then, once you get that kill, you get an additional extra action, two action points to really allow you to do some damage. This is really great for some of the early fights that you'll have because mo most of the time in the beginning stages, you're not going to be really having one-on-one -on -one situations. You're going to be having a lot of like, oh, there's a little target. Well, it's smack, 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 smack. Oh, okay, I used Adrenaline, killed him, got a few extra action points, smack. So it allows you to be able to do an, a few extra actions out there. So if a mixture of Adrenaline mixed with Executioner really makes a really good combo for doing and making those plays when you get out there. And I really highly recommend that because I think that it really goes well, especially in the beginning, because there's a lot of little fights. And those little fights, you can really commit to killing the little like minions to allow yourself to get rid of them and get them out of the fray to where they don't do any of their pedally stuff while you guys focus on the boss, which is very helpful, especially in the beginning. Anyways guys, I do hope you enjoyed this short video. I basically wanted to start doing some top 5 guides. Um, I know that was one of my most popular videos, is like how to build Fane, how to build the Red Prince, how to build these certain characters and everything. And I figured I would go back and be like, okay, what are the top 5 I would recommend for each of the different races out there? Now with obviously all the different ones out there, I still think that some of them can obviously be played on different characters. However, I really wanted to utilize the sort of defenses that the Red Prince has, as a lot of these different builds are pretty good in their different situations, but having that little extra like protection from things really helps out, especially with the two-handers. A lot of people might, will be saying, well, why in the world would you recommend two hands if he has this resistance? Wouldn't it be awesome to double up and use it for your magical armor? Yes, that does make sense. However, having that extra resistance really helps out when jumping into the melee fray. It makes it super good because you don't have to worry about damage as much than you typically do. Now, obviously, there is min-maxing ways of doing like human and everything to make those builds viable, but I think that still having a little bit of a less worry is always a good thing, and it can help out in certain scenarios rather than maximizing your damage output. Anyways, I know that's a lot of big words, I know that's a lot of talking today, and I don't want to make this video 20 to 40 minutes long, but I want to thank you guys for watching. Also, if you do like some of my videos and my content, make sure you guys subscribe. I know a lot of you guys are not subscribing, and I think I have plenty of content that you guys will enjoy, and don't worry, there will be more builds to come. Obviously, this is just the first main character I wanted to focus on. There will be many, many more out there. Also, I know that I haven't posted any of the Let's Play series yet. Don't worry, that is coming too. I uh, just got over being really, really sick, and then I also was working a crap ton to make up for me being sick. So, hopefully, uh, we can actually uh, get some more content out there and get back into the fray of things. So, anyways, like, comment, subscribe, and visit my Patreon, and I will see you guys next time. Stay baller, my friends.